Hello, Big Jim with Big Jim's Boat Company here. I want to talk a little bit about aiming methods. I get asked this a bunch. Uh, everybody has a, not everybody, but most people have a way that they prefer to shoot. And they're set in their ways and once they figure it out, it either works for them or they just keep struggling with it. Others want to move around until they find out what method works the best for them. Uh, I could be here forever trying to explain all the little idiots idiosyncrasies of each and every particular method. The two that I would say are, are uh, the most common is what we call instinctive or it's a subconscious gapping method where you don't see the arrow and through repetition your mind memorizes the arc, automatically determines distance and whatnot and with, if you don't put too much thought into yardage and where to hold the bow and arrow and all that with practice, you would do it somewhat instinctively. So, but instinctive is not really a good definition. The other is gap. You estimate the yardage. If through practice, you've determined how much distance the point of your arrow needs to be above or below the spot on the target that you want to hit, and that's where you hold it. So, while you're staring at the target, you would hold the point down, or you know, down if you're closer, below it. Uh, and over it if you're further away where you're um, whatever it takes to get your arrow to fall into place. Now I'm not going to tell you which one's better because I don't think one is better than the other unless you have problems trying to figure one of them out. For me instinctive works well. Uh, you know if you're a target archer I would say that gap would probably work better for you for those situations where there's lots of targets that are over 25 yards but most people as hunters aren't taking shots in excess of 20 yards I mean some have the ability to do so and it would depend on the animals disposition at the time of the shot and that's a, again a, another can of worms we don't want to get into right now uh, but there's nothing wrong with instinctive if you can um, learn to master that and nothing wrong with gap either so I don't want to say one's better than the other but for some people one of them is going to be the best avenue to, to ensue and uh, again for me it's instinctive but having said that in the beginning I shot more of a grip it and rip it where I grabbed the bow and just pull back and when I hit anchor I released in kind of a snap shooting fashion and I did pretty good at that, but my consistency level was not where I would like it to be. And over time, I caught myself short drawing. When my hand was on the target, my mind hand eye coordination said it was ready to shoot, and it didn't matter where in the draw my, my draw hand was. This is a slave to the, to the trigger in your head. And once you start realizing that you're short drawing, well, target panic's not far around the corner. So I've got a little more regimented system. Uh, it works for me. I, uh, I sought out professional help when I felt that I was uh, short drawing and, and was concerned that, you know, much more of that and target panic would be next. So, you know, it's a good thing to, to search out some help whether you are having issues or not. It can expedite your learning process and, uh, you know, it's always more fun to shoot better than it is to shoot worse. So. In my regimented process, basically, I, I set my feet, and that's not always going to work for you. You know, if you're a hunting situation, you might get stuck with your feet in a certain position, but you can shoot fine that way as well. I shoot across my shoulders rather than a uh, more open stance because this is my maximum draw length, and it's the most consistent and repeatable draw length from day to day, no matter how I feel. If for whatever reason I'm stiffer one day, I might feel that this is comfortable and not know any different than a little bit more closed or even a little bit more open and that changes my draw length. Aiming across my shoulders and chest in line with the target, comfortable feet, they just kind of shoulder width, nothing uh, out of the ordinary, and address the string. Now, those are pretty simple. Probably the biggest difference after that is I don't burn a hole in a target until it's time for me to start aiming. And that doesn't happen until I've completed every part of that process and come back and find my anchor. 
and know that I'm at full draw. Once I'm at full draw, I switch my attention to the spot on the target I want to hit and burn with everything I've got. Most of the time I don't see the arrow. And that's really, you know, what people would call true instinctive, which again, subconsciously you're seeing it. We can argue this forever. It doesn't really matter. But the point of it is by doing that, you've got the same draw length that you would have all the time. And you're at you've made it to anchor point. So you've accomplished two things that you may never accomplish with the grip it and rip it. And that's a consistent draw length and hitting a consistent anchor point. Once I've come back to my anchor and I know that everything's light, right, again, as I said, I focus on the target and I try to pull through using back tension, a uh, huge, huge explanation and time-consuming thing, best to be saved for another time, but try to pull through it and get a clean release while I'm burning a hole. If I can do all those things consistently, I can shoot consistently. From day to day without you know my good days don't get much better and my bad days don't get much worse they all tend to be fairly uh fairly much the same as long as i'm shooting at least a little bit see if i can try that i'm by no means perfect at this and i have to work at it all the time you don't ever get to perfect form and then you're done you don't have to work at it or anything and you can uh do it over and over this is a never-ending process Simple as that, whether that was as right as I wanted it to be or not, like I say, it's a never-ending process. So keep it up, enjoy what you're doing, and strive to be better all the time, and things will happen. But you have to make changes. As uh, Einstein once said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So good luck to you. If you have any questions, send us an email, give us a call at BigJimsBowCompany.com. Check us out on all the typical social media platforms.